guys, it's Jen here and welcome to Jen's Wild About Watercolour. So today I'm going to paint two emperor penguins for you. Um, so I'm drawing them in with my Albrecht Dura Faber-Castell watercolour pencils. Um, I've been using these pencils a lot lately. Um, I find that they're really good for sketching in um, the, 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 the initial drawings. Um, you can't rub them out like with a, with a normal eraser, but I find I can alter the drawing as I go along. Uh, when I add water and paint, it all just it washes in with the paint. So it sort of disappears the bits you don't want. And yeah, it's really, really useful, really effective. Um, so yes, yeah, so I'm just drawing in this first penguin's body now. And I'll pop just his little wings in. And now pop his little feet, just the sort of illusion of his feet. And he's got quite orangey gold pattern on his neck there so I'll just mark that off and then he's got a stripe that comes down the side and now I'll draw the second penguin in and he's sort of looking up and to the left so like I said before I can alter it sort of with the paint because this the pencil will just wash away but it's a great tool they're great useful pencils for um, watercolours so let's draw his head in change the shape a little bit there needed to be a little bit bigger but that's all right I can just wash that out with a wet brush later now take it down he comes down with his wing and his tummy like that then he's got a bit of a stripe that comes down onto his shoulder there and he's got a yellowy bit on his beak so I'll just mark that in and then he's got a gradiated orange sort of tone on his chest. So I'll just mark that in. And now I pop the bank in like that. And then that will be ocean to that point. And then the sky above. So now I'm mixing, I'll pop some tape on. And um, just to make it look a bit neater when it's a done finished picture. Hopefully it won't tear my paper. <laughs> um, yeah, I find this tape, generally, it's very, very sticky. I couldn't find my other little me, uh, washi tape, so I'm using this one. It's just my Cielo tape. So I'm keeping my fingers crossed that it doesn't tear the paper at the end. <laughs> but um, I know you, there's tricks you can use. You can um, heat it up with a hairdryer, and that'll sort of dissolve the glue a little bit underneath, and that'll pull it off easier. But because it's in my sketchbook, it's not the end of the world. It's just, yeah, it's going to live in my sketchbook anyway. So that's fine. So now I'm mixing up a greyish colour. So I'm using um, transparent sienna and cobalt blue for this. Just to make up a grey, a dark grey wash. Check it on my paper just like that. And then I take it down the first bird's back. So yeah, so these guys... They're gorgeous birds. I've been to the Melbourne Aquarium. We have them here. Um, and you can get right up close to them. And um, they're in behind a big glass enclosure. But they've got their tank. So you can stand and watch them swim and dive and play. And they're just <laughs> incredible things. And they've got their uh, nesting area. So you go at the right time of year. And you can see their little chicks. And they're gorgeous. Oh, my God. And they're the funniest personalities. They're really quirky. It's really fun to go and see them at feed time. Um, so these guys, they're the tallest of all the living penguin species. Um, they only live in the Antarctic um, in, and their temperatures, they get so cold down there. They uh, temperatures can get to minus 40 degrees Celsius. Um, they get to about 48 inches tall and can weigh up to about 45 kilos. Um, so they're a pretty impressive creature. They're quite bulky. Um, they live on or they eat crustaceans, krill, squid, things like that. Um, which they catch all around their own home environment. And they can they swim, like they can stay submerged for 20 minutes underwater and they can swim to 1,700 feet, which is pretty incredible. So they can dive quite deep. So, yeah, they're, they're amazing creatures. So now I'm going in, I've made up, I've just, I've used my um, transparent sienna, sienna and cobalt blue, but I've also added a little bit of Payne's grey just to darken up the head because the head is quite a lot darker than the body 
So I'm just and taking that down that line that he's got down his neck and onto his fins. So or his wings. So they're flightless, obviously, but they, when they're underwater, they look like they're flying. They're just glorious to watch. So, yeah, now I just go over that original wash with the same, like, so it's still transparent sienna, cobalt blue, and a little bit of Payne's grey, but a very, very wet wash. So very thin and very watery. So it's a silvery sort of colour. Now I'm just, while it's still wet, I'm going in with that same mix just a little bit thicker so just into his darkest bits his darker shadows I apologize I've, I've got the camera I'm trying all different setups <laughs> and I've got the camera above my head today and I keep knocking it with my head so I apologize um but yeah I'm, I'm still figuring out where things work best and where the best view is for my camera <laughs> so it's all all a work in progress but we're getting there so I finally figured the lighting out, thank goodness. Oh my gosh, that's been a journey. But we got there in the end. The lighting's pretty good. <laughs> but now I've just got to figure out a happy space for my camera. So anyway, so I go back in to the second bird. And I'm popping the beak on. So this is with the Payne's Grey Transparent Sienna Mix. Just a thin wash, a wet wash. Just around the head. Just to colour, the, to block that in. Just like that and take it so it's silvery grey. Whoops, got a bit of water, a bit of colour in there that I shouldn't have and whoops, and I knocked everything. And um, so just mop that out with a damp brush. And then that's gone, that's sorted. So now I go back in, finish the head off with the grey. Whoops, trying to fix the camera, get it all back to where it's meant to be. <laughs> okay, so now... I am mixing up some more colour. So just a slightly thicker mix of, uh, so it's um, again transparent sienna, cobalt blue and a little bit of Payne's grey just to darken that head right up. Just like that. Because the heads are very nearly black, very nearly black and I just keep darkening that up as I go. So yeah, as you can see, it's getting darker and darker the more coats I pop on. And I have the heater on in here today, so it's it's drying pretty quickly. Um, so yeah, now I do the lines. So he's got like a gold strip, a golden white strip down his neck, so I've just drawn that in. And now his wing is quite black. He has a white or cream belly, so his wing is quite black. So that's a contrast to his tummy. So I've just done that in. Now I go over first penguin's head with more of a, a solid Payne's grey. So a very teeny tiny little bit of transparent umber in there, but it's mainly Payne's grey. Just to darken that head right up. And I'm using my schminky watercolours today. So they're, they're beautiful, vibrant, strong colours. So now I'm going back into the body with transparent sienna and cobalt blue. So it's a brownie grey over the top of the body grey. And I'll just, just to give it a bit more depth. And now I go into second penguin with the same colour, just in a very light wash, just to get some colour on there. And I'm mixing up some colours. Well, I'll let that dry. So just having to think, what am I going to do next? So I'm about to come back in. She's just about dry now. Dry enough to work with anywho. So I come back in with the sky now. So that for the sky, I'm just using a very watery wash of ultramarine. 
yeah, I had to wait a little bit just to let it dry so I didn't sort of end up with mud <laughs> in my sky. I didn't want a muddy sky. So yeah, so that's a bit of bit of ultramarine for the sky and there. I've got it a bit thick at the bottom, so I've got a I'll take a damp brush to that and soften it in a mini. So yeah, just run it around that side, just fill the sky in, take it back around the other side. Now I can soften that bit up there. Just like that. There we go, beauty. And then I go in with a thicker wash of the same ultramarine. So it's still quite we're still very wet, but it's wet on dry I'm doing. Um so wet brush on dry paper with ultramarine and I'm taking that down both sides to create the ocean and I will darken that up take it right up and over that tape on the sides like that and then I go in with almost pure ultramarine to the darkest at the skyline there where the ocean touches the sky now I've had a little bit of bleeding up the top a little bit of sort of sort of washing out the top of the line but that's okay I can touch that up later so now I take it all the way down so the water gets see so I'll try and soften it there lose some of those fuzzy wuzzy edges I didn't want like that and um, yeah so it starts dark at the top and lightens off as you get towards so in the horizons dark and as you get to the foreground it lightens up so now I just add in a little bit of oceany texture because in this photograph the water's very still it's very flat there's no waves or because it's all icy i suppose the ice waves the ice works as a break and stops stops from any big waves from forming so now i'm just popping in a few odd brush strokes here and there just to give the impression of water and then i think hmm, maybe i've gone a bit heavy with that so i'll just go over the top <laughs> and uh just darken that up again just take some of those brush marks away and it softens it right up like that and then I take it getting it thinner and thinner to the bottom so it's lighter and lighter just to soften that up like that all around their little bodies or their giant bodies So now let it dry a little bit more and then I come back in to the ground with a bit of cobalt blue and a bit of burnt umber so to make a brownie grey again because this is all rock under them like rocky stony outcrop. So I'm just going to run sort of around the rough shapes of the pattern of the rocks. So there's a rock coming down there. There's a rock there. So I'm just sort of roughing in shapes. I don't want it just completely flat like the water or the sky. Just gives a bit of texture. So now I'm just going to soften up, run a damp brush over the top of it all just to soften edges. And now I'm going in with a bit of burnt umber just to add a bit of texture to these rocky bits. So they're sort of impressionistic. I'm not doing exact rocks or exactly as they are in the reference photo. I'm just sort of just making it up as I go along here, just imaginary sort of lines where there'd be edges of rocks and things like that. And just so it's not all just perfectly flat. And there's sort of a drop off in front of them where they're standing. So uh, pop that around. So still using burn number and I've popped a bit of Payne's gray in there just to sort of darken it off. Now I'm using a damp brush to take it all around again, soften up those edges, just like that. And I'll go back in with um, my Albrecht Dura watercolour pencils at the end and just tidy up those edges, just to give them some definition. So now, just initially I'll pop in some Payne's Grey and um, transparency in it just around the edges there there we go and 
just tidy up that edge. Let that dry a little bit. Now I'm coming back in to darken up his face. So I'm coming in with pretty much a pure Payne's grey now because his head is the darkest part of him. Leaving, still leaving a little bit of a lighter grey where his eyes, his eyes shut, but um, you can sort of see the, the shadow of his eyelid, or the eyelid, the light of his eyelid, a reflection -y bit. So I'm just leaving that a little bit lighter. Now I'll go in to his beak, take that back into his head like that. And soften that edge up underneath and go around that line that's going to be around his orangey goldy stripe Dar darken up that outside fin or wing like that Now, just take down that first penguin and darken that line there up. They've got a very dark line that follows their head down to their wing. I'll just darken his head right up there. Do that other wing. Right, now I'm going back into his body with a wash of Payne's Grey and Transparent. It's a teeniest bit of Transparent Sienna because their body is a slightly different tone to their head. That's a bit lighter, a bit softer. So now I'm just popping in a little bit more definition. So his little tail feathers, his little legs out there. And now I'll take down his wing, a bit darker down his wing. Let it dry a little bit more. And then I come back in to the gold areas and I'm using Quin Gold Hue for this, just for the base, just there. And I'll, I'll do a gradient as I go along, but for the now I'm just popping that in in a very thin wash, just to get a bit of the gold. And now I'm going back in with Cat Orange Deep into the line down his neck, like that. And I'll darken up that top bit and then I can take a damp brush and blend it a little bit more so it's more of a gradient like that. And then he's got the same colour in his beak. So I'm going into his beak with Cat Orange Deep. And then I'll do this other fella's little orange bits. And take that in, slightly different gradient. like that and that gets the colour on him so that's the Quin Gold hue. Okay I'll darken up this a bit more with the Cat Orange Deep. Whoops. Take that down his neck again and into his beak. And then he's got a little strip up the side of his beak. So now I'm popping a damp brush onto his tummy and a little bit of cobalt blue just to create shadow. Just the teeniest little bit of shadow. And darken up the eye. And 
And now I'm going in with my Faber-Castell Albrecht Dura black watercolour pencil and I'm just popping in some feather details because you can just see little feathery strips on his back. So I'm just drawing them in over his whole back. Oops, I'll wobble the camera, hit it with my head again as you do. Straighten that up, all good. Okie doke. So then I keep popping in the definition for his little feathers. So I'm enjoying these watercolour pencils because you can just add that little bit more texture. So it just let, allows you to have incorporate a bit more detail in your watercolours. So I go over there, trying to keep it random pattern so it's not just lines and lines and lines, rows of lines. Just like that and take it down. Covering his whole back just like that and you can start to see that it looks like he's got a feathery back. And then he's got a bit of a line there where his leg is. So just tidy that up and run down the rest of his back like that. Yeah, again, trying to keep random not just doing lines, doing zigzaggy bits and wiggly bits and there we go. So take that right down to his feet, that other leg. Now I'll go just to find that beak a bit more and darken it up as a fraction. Soften those feathery bits around his stripe. Now I'll go back into that bird and do the same just to put a bit of texture. Have to sharpen my pencil again. Now I'm going in with my orange pencil just to with watercolour pencil. So it's an orangey brown just to touch up those bits. So watercolour pencil, so that is, what colour is that? I'm using my terracotta it is actually. So now I'll take, go back in with the black and do the definition around his tail because you can see his little tail feathers. And then I go in with the burn umber pencil and do his feet because you can see the backs of his little feet. Now I go in with a light grey and just add some feathery texture to the back of that first bird, the biggest bird. Take that down into the shadow on his chest. And now I'm going in with my white pencil, white Faber-Castell watercolour pencil. And just anywhere there's highlights or reflection on their backs, I'm literally just going to smudge that in like that and it just gives look sort of makes it look like it's shining a little bit and he's got a bit of light under there like that and you can still just see that eye on that bird's shut so I just went over the edge of that pop a bit of detail on the beak he's got a highlight sort of down there so I'll mark that in He's got a bit of light under there and a bit under there. So a bit of shiny bit there. So they're starting to look three dimensional. Oh, and I hit the camera with my head again. And now I'm going in with the, I think, the burn umber pencil or a very dark brown and just define the edge of these rocks. So just, um, again, I'm just making it up as I go along just so it looks sort of like the effect of sort of shaley rock, just like that. Just gives them, grounds them, gives them somewhere to stand. So you're going in again with this really dark chocolate brown just to find the edge a bit more. 
So yeah, these watercolour pencils are coming in handy. <laughs> so yeah, really enjoying mixing the two. So now we're done. So I'm going to pull this paper off, hopefully not ripping it. Like I said before, this paper is very, 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 this tape's very sticky. Uh, probably shouldn't have used it, but no, we're going to get away with it. I think we're doing pretty well. Yep. Uh, hold it sort of as I go on to a little bit of lifting, but it's not really a problem. So, okay, we'll go for that bit. <laughs> That's easy. There we go. Whoop, that came off easy. And now I'll try and get that bit off. So I have to rub it with my fingertip. That's it. Roll the edge up. Get that off. And it does give it a nice effect when you do this. Oops, I do a little bit of a tear, but that's okay. It's in my notebook, in my sketchbook. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I had lots of fun. Um, yeah, loved it. love for you to follow along. So click the, the bell icon and that way you'll see videos as they come up. And I'll see you guys next time. Have an awesome day. Okay, bye.